Welcome to Bundesliga Chat Time from We Are Soccer. I'm Craig Hearn, and as normal, I've got Nate Janoulis, our Bundesliga expert with us. Nate, how you doing, buddy? Good, friend. How are you? How are you? Doing all right, man. So uh, the Bundesliga is not actually playing this week. They're on international break, as everybody knows. Most of the players are off playing with their international teams, so no Bundesliga games. But... We still feel it's a good time to do some Bundesliga chat time because we can talk about what happened over the summer, what's happened in the first three games of the season. And then we can look forward to some of the, we can talk about some of the fixtures that are coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, so lots to talk about as normal with the Bundesliga, the players, the teams, and everything that goes along with it. You ready, Nate? Yeah. Uh, you know, we had a flurry of transfers that, that happened. So I'm ready to, ready to talk about those. And a lot of it is... Um, there are a lot of underrated players or unknown players that mm -hmm. have been transferred, not the big names, big money stuff. Um, so a lot of people might have not heard about it. So I find a lot of these things interesting because of what it might do to the d dynamic of those teams and where it could actually help them throughout the season. Well, let's jump in, man. Give us give us an example. Give us an example of, of an underrated uh, transfer that happened that may have not caught a lot of people's eyes but you think it's going to make a big difference this year in that Bundesliga league well the the first one that I think uh is up here is actually uh Chris Richards from Munich hmm. U.S. national player getting a loan back to uh to Hoffenheim here um he did this last year mid-season and it actually he ended up being a starter right off from the get-go and never lost it Hoffenheim actually sitting ninth they're not a bad squad right now. They have a couple decent players. They're not going to set the world on fire, but it's a good spot for him mm -hmm. because he can slide in and be a starter like he did last year. So from a team perspective for Hoffenheim, he's a great center back that worked well for them. They get him back. Um, and for a player's pers perspective, and if you're a fan of the national team, Chris Richards now is getting the, that uh, starting time that he needs still in the competitive league, yep. uh, still owned by Munich. So they didn't sell him. They think he's probably worth something and they're keeping him around, just allowing him to get uh, time over there off that. So you've, you've got to believe that if they took him back on loan, they really wanted to buy him, but yep. Munich, Munich probably refused to sell saying, we still believe this guy's got something in him. We believe that he could come good at some point. Um, we don't need the money, so we'll loan him back to you to get the minutes and, his ex and the experience in his legs. So uh, that's going to work out well for everybody, uh, for, for, for the player, for, for his, uh, the club who's loaning him, and ultimately, as you said, for the U.S. men's national team who gets to watch a player get some very valuable minutes um, in his yeah, life. Yeah, essentially you're talking about an 18-, 19-year-old uh, player that you know can't start for Munich because they got some better veterans mm -hmm. that are playing there now but was able to start for another Bundesliga team in the league and perform quite well. So, yeah, obviously they see Munich sees some value there to keep him. But again, he's probably going to be seeing he was a starter last time around with Hoffenheim. I'd expect him to slide right in there and mm -hmm. be a starter this time around. So, yeah, it, it's going to be an interesting to watch. It makes Hoffenheim, as a USA fan, makes Hoffenheim an interesting team to pay attention to yep. as well. I like it. Um, the next bit of thing, and we'll get to Sabitzer moving to Muchen later, but Leipzig lost Sabitzer. Mm -hmm. And there's actually a bit of a funny story there, but they actually picked up a, a, a Barcelona player, uh, 20, uh, under 18, Spanish, under 21, international, uh, Morbia, who's coming in now and playing in for Leipzig, who's moving there, kind of filling that center mid spot. And I think that'll be an interesting move for him. I think Sabitzer lost the spot as soon as uh, uh, Sal Bazar from Hungary kind of came forward. He's a fantastic 20-year-old who scored two goals on his debut. Mm. He's doing great. Um, this gives them that depth. He, the kid's not going to start right away, but it, it adds uh, an added element of depth in that center midfield if he goes out or Forsberg goes out or needs a rest they can lean on him. So that should be an interesting one, especially since he's an under 21 Spanish international and yep. he's coming from Barcelona. So we'll see how that works. And uh, they were quite excited to sign him. Um, 
Next on the list, Stuttgart has a pair of strikers, actually. You know I'm going to bring up Stuttgart. Yeah, yeah. I, I <laughs> no, think it was know. coming. It's going to happen. So Stuttgart's got a pair of strikers. Uh, one's a Denmark uh, under-21 international um, by the name of Fegher. Um, he's 18 years old. Plays for Den- Came from Denmark club. I'm not going to even pretend to pronounce it because I can't. No one knows who it is anyways. But he's uh, more importantly, he plays for the – U21 team for Denmark. Okay. Um, and then also um, Marcia, uh, who's a English or a, sorry, Egyptian international who plays for Wolf, Wolfsburg as well. Hmm. Stuttgart struggled in the beginning to actually have very many goals and good attacking after the first game. They mm-hmm. lost a couple of their strikers who are injured. Mm-hmm. And now they got a, a pair of strikers to kind of rotate in to see how they work, both young, both on loan. So that should be interesting as well. So, so low knees, obviously low risk, um, but low young, risk. young and energetic and need to prove themselves. So uh, low risk, high reward um, for Stuttgart. Sounds, sounds like a win-win. Hopefully they can do the business for them. Oh, yeah. Well, so we'll see. they will be interesting to watch going forward. They might get their shot right now, especially with multiple strikers kind of being on the mend right now. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, team that I thought needed a center back actually got one. Uh, Dortmund or is picking up uh, Pragdovic, who's on loan from Wolfsburg as well. Um, they've had a few center backs that have been injured. I thought they've been lacking, having to move their center defensive mid into center back for the time being. They actually got a center back on loan from Wolfsburg, who isn't a bad center back, but he's just not starting over one Jonathan Brooks, who actually is decent for the yep. U.S. national team. And um, – his pairing so they loaned him out because he just wasn't getting the playing time so it, it should be a decent move from that guy plays for the Croatian national team it should be interesting okay all right so interesting I like that last on the list before we get into Sabitzer because I think there's that's a very interesting story there um you have Wolfsburg who's actually sitting in top of the league yep after now, three games three wins yep yep they picked up a pair of strikers Luka Baku, who actually came from Hartha, who's coming in on loan, who actually has been very decent, and a Wild Schmidt, who they bought back from Port um, from uh, Benfica. Hmm. So two strikers. Uh, Wild Schmidt actually plays, uh, has played for the German national team, came from, has played in the Bundesliga before, went went to Portugal for a bit, now is coming back. Interesting. Luka Baku is playing playing for Hartha. This brings up a really interesting dynamic in that they just got better as a team that's undefeated right now and probably mm. off to the best start. Right. So it'll be interesting to see how Wolfberg works these two players in, both attacking-minded players. Right. Luke Baku has played in the league with Hartha, scored multiple times for Hartha. Actually, I think had a hat trick against Munich last year at one point. Mm. Uh, Wild Schmidt used to play in the league. It's coming back, so they're both – players familiar with league, both successful players at the time playing for the league. So it really sets up Wolfsburg going in uh, for the main of the season to really be a, a contender, actually. Wolfsburg uh, kind of doubling down here, saying we're at the top of the league. We got to we gotta press forward and, and get yep. some more tech. All right, I like it. I like that. Yep. I, I mean, I, let's be honest, come the end of the year, I don't think you and I uh, are going to see Wolfsburg. We're not going to believe that we're going to see Wolfsburg in the number one spot, but – uh, good for them, man. I, I like a team that goes for it. I like a club that actually doubles down and says, let's let's have a go at this, man. Let, let's challenge these boy, the big boys. Remember, they are also adding depth for the Champions League as well. Mm-hmm. So they yep. are a Champions League team, Yep, and they're all competing. So they're, they're adding depth in both areas. So last but not least, the big thing that everyone's been talking about is the Beats are going to Munich. This is an interesting one because I don't know where he fits in. You know, mm-hmm. there is a lot of good talent on the Munich team. I get it. He was the captain for Nigelsmann. Yeah, N- Nigelsmann he, seems to have a thing for him, right? He was a captain yep. over there at Leipzig, and now Nigelsmann moved to to, Mun- to Munich, and now he brought him in. Him. And it has been rumored, and all of a sudden, it just, then it just happened at the end of the window. So, yes, um, I mean, you don't you don't pay that type of money for a captain of a club and not have a spot for him, at least maybe first man off the bench, right? I, it's it's going to be interesting how they rope him in because there's a lot of depth, a lot of talent. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's 
he wasn't the go-to guy. Well, he was when Nagelsmann was for Leipzig. Mm -hmm. But as soon as he left, Forsberg came on the scene. The Hungarian attacking midfielder came on the scene. He dropped. And then he they were looking to move him. He lost his he kind of lost his place a little bit in Leipzig. So it'll be interesting to see what he can do for Munich, if he can do anything for Munich, yeah. where it's gonna be. Um now he's also a very versatile player. He can play a wide, he can play attacking mid, he can play defensive mid. So that helps. They can move him around in various different spots. Um, this apparently was his boyhood club dream to play there. Mm -hmm. Funny story. Apparently. He tried out as a net, like as a youth player for Munich. His father told him, "No, do not go to Munich. You're not ready for Munich." So he showed up to the tryouts. According to the reports, according to the Munich uh, youth national or the youth coach, he showed up and he tanked on purpose the trial. He purposely showed up, tanked it so bad, and it was so obvious he tanked it that his manager, Sabitzer's manager, had to go and apologize to actually the youth coach. And the youth coach said, yeah, I knew he tanked it. So that was a, a report that was actually recently released that he basically showed up. And instead of just saying, no, no, thank you, he showed up to the trials, purposely wow. tanked it so he could go to another team and, and work his way up. So apparently he's going to the club that he's always wanted to go to. And there's yeah. pictures of him you know, wearing the jerseys when yeah. he was a kid. I mean, he's from Austria. Austria is you know, close to the Munich Bavaria area it makes sense you know so it'll be f fun to watch where that put where they put this player where he's gonna go how he's gonna go how it's gonna work and it just makes munich that much stronger for the champions league if you ask me it gives them more depth and, and that's that's what i think it is i think you know uh, these teams have figured out that you can't just have a solid 12 or 13 players you got to have a solid 17 18 yep. players in your squad these days because You've got champion. You've got your league. You got your Champions League. You got domestic cups. Um, there's, so, I mean, the average team these days will play 50 games a year, and at the high level that these guys are playing at, injuries happen. Their bodies break down. Uh, obviously, they're playing against other grown men with with daggers on the bottom of their shoes. Um, we call them boots, but you know those are those things hurt when you get stepped on or kicked with them. So um, maybe Munich's just you know what? We're we're buying a guy now who we know can step in and step in a, at any at any role we need out wide in the middle up top wherever it may be. So uh, they're buying like you said they're buying a versatile player that can step in um, when when it uh, needs to be that old phrase of next man up. And he's a different player. So you know if he's jumping in for Mueller, who's doing very well by the way. Yep. Um, and but if say they need to make a sub and they need to make a change up and they need to add something different, he can jump in in there and add a different element than what Mueller plays. Right. So it does it does add a it does give you a player where you can change the game a little bit. And I yeah. think that's important from that aspect. Yep. So so win win I think for everyone there. Um, Leipzig gets their money. They use that obviously to bring in the, the Barcelona player. Uh, to, to change things up for them. And uh, Sabitzer gets to go where he was always wanted to. And Nigel's men gets a trusted captain and a guy he can rely on in the locker room. So, so it makes sense. All right. Yeah. Th those, those transfers make a lot of sense. I like that some of them were kind of the lesser known. Uh, let our viewers know that. And some of them, uh, probably some like, uh, you know, Sabitzer, they did know. Um, let me ask you a question, Nate. So far, we've played three uh games uh in the Bundesliga so far who's impressed you what teams impressed you and what player has has stood out to you uh so far uh, in those three games well uh the team that's impressed me the most is Wolfsburg I would never thought that they would be 3-0 just going in they're doing very well uh they were good last year but with the coaching change and everything that happened they didn't really really changed that much as far as picking up any marquee names or anything like that, mm -hmm. but they have been me. So being three and zero, and I kind of, I'm kind of rooting for them. I hope they can keep going. I think Brooks, Jonathan Brooks is doing very well there. Uh, Warghars is scoring a lot of goals and they just look good as a team playing. It's, it's a very team oriented uh, group and that's how they play. They don't have a lot of what you'd call marquee names. Mm-hmm. 
things that jump out at you, catch me names or anything like that, but they play together as it can as a whole unit and they're fun to watch. So they have impressed me. Um, Leverkusen has impressed me with the way they've been attacking lately. We'll see if they can keep it up. Mm-hmm. Again, going forward, it's, it's look, it looks like a complete unit running forward and going going at teams. So we'll see if they can actually put it up. And as far as players that impress me, I mean, I think a lot can be said for Gio Reyna and how he's been playing for uh, how he's been playing for more uh, Dortmund. A yeah. lot can be said about how Drew Bellingham has been playing for. Yeah, uh, Dortmund as well, yeah. and a lot can be said about a Jamal Musiala and how he's been playing for uh, Munich. And I think those three players, all who I believe are 21 and under, have been have been performing phenomenally in the Bundesliga. So, and that's kind of what this league's a lot of it's about: uh, younger players who are making their names for themselves, and it's fun to watch. You know, that's and, what this that's what this league is essentially. Oh, yeah. Guys, guys who are making a name for themselves. But then you've got guys like uh, Robert Lewandowski, who's got five goals in three games, right? Just yep. no matter how old he is or or the the circumstance surrounding where he's at and what he wants to do with his career, he still keeps banging the ball in the back of the net. Um, yep. Erling Holland again, uh, three goals, three games. Um, Schick. Yeah, Robert Schick getting goals. I mean, uh, the the it's still early in the season, but those bigger names are coming to the top of the 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 fruit is showing, um, as they say. So um, it's 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 an I, I love the Bundesliga, man. It, it's become one of my favorite leagues because you got these young guys and a mixture of the old guys, and you never know what's going to happen. Um, so yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I really like that Jude Bellingham started the 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 season off well again with Dorman. Uh, I predict in two years Bellingham is going to probably go somewhere. Has to, absolutely there, has to. He is. I think he's a phenomenal talent. I think again, I look at he had an option for Man United and he had an option for um, Munich or not Munich, but Dortmund. Mm-hmm. And for sure, I think Dortmund was the better spot that he he went to because he became a starter there. Yeah. I don't know if you would have got that starting ability at, yeah. at Manchester or anywhere else. He's getting that starting chance at Thorpe Moon. I think it's mm-hmm. great. And he's, and he's showing what he can do. And it it's a, they did a special on him at ESPN plus, hopefully our sponsor soon. Um, <laughs> they did a special on him that you can watch. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. He's a very humble, I'd say 18, 19 year old, humble. And, uh, it's phenomenal the story and, and yeah. the player that he is and how he is and how he's come up. So I'm, I'm a fan and I, you know, I, I hope he, I think he's going to really break out here. He's already breaking out. I think yeah. after he's just been shown that he can do it repeatedly. Yeah. I think he's gone and, and off to a bigger, definitely top five club somewhere. I, I agree, man. I 100% agree. So, um, yeah, kind of a unique Bundesliga chat time for us this week on international break. We talked about some of the transfers, talked about some of the players, talked about some of the teams moving forward. Uh, what what else do you want to add, my friend? I mean, we could talk about because uh, they they're right back into it next weekend. So um, whenever we're we're in this Thursday or whatever, they're a couple more days. Uh, they're Saturday, uh, nine eleven, nine twelve. They're sliding right into the games. They're not really skipping a beat. Yes, a lot of the players left on international duty, but a lot of the clubs that had, like Stuttgart played a friendly. So a lot of the clubs that had players that didn't go, they usually line up friendlies during this time and play anyways, just to keep themselves active with the the regular 24 other players that might not be going on. So with that, I mean, there's the upcoming games that I personally am looking forward to. Uh, on 9-11, we have Leverkusen versus Dortmund. Leverkusen mm. sit number two, Dortmund yep. at number five. That's going to be, I think that's going to be the game of the week as far right. as exciting games to watch. Uh, again, Leverkusen has been scoring goals like crazy. Very interesting. Dortmund, of course, with their attacking lineup is always interesting. It'll be, um, we'll see who they have back. If they have Hummels back at that that moment, they've been they've been missing their center backs. See if they, they're lonely, see if they, slide him in to, to help at that defensive area because that's where they've been struggling about 
Corbel, the goalkeeper they picked up from Stuttgart, has been well, but he needs two solid center backs. He really hasn't had it. Okay. So I would look, be looking Leverkusen, Dortmund is a good game. Hoffenheim versus Mainz. Hoffenheim is ninth. Mainz is seventh. Mm-hmm. Again, you got Chris Richards there. should be starting. Um, Hoffenheim has been a fun team with some of the goals they've been scoring. Uh, Mainz is sitting there hold, trying to hold on and, and move up. They're close in the table. Should be a competitive match. And then finally for, for Saturday, uh, Leipzig versus M- Munich. Munich's third. Moving up, Leipzig's tenth, which they need to they win. Had, they've struggled. They a need to win. Bit. They can't fall too they far behind. To you can't win a championship in win. September, but you can definitely lose it. They got. They need to win yeah. to keep flying, to to get back and, into the race. Yep. And I hope for Jesse Marsh. I'm yeah. I'm going to be rooting for Jesse Marsh here. I'm hoping Leipzig get that win or at least something, a draw, nick yeah. a point, yeah. something, get something here. So that should be an interesting game just because of the dynamics there of, <clears throat> of Leipzig and and Munich. Yes. And then uh, that leads us up into Sunday. Um, you're going to punch me, but I got to say it. Frankfurt versus Stuttgart. <laughs> now, Frankfurt's 14th, Stuttgart's 13th. Frankfurt hasn't won a game yet. So Frankfurt's struggling. to They, they need to break their first win yet. Uh, Stuttgart has their first win, but then has lost the last two. Yeah. So this is kind of fizzling out to be a must win for both teams. One for Stuttgart to get back on track yep. and the other one for Frankfurt to do something, yep. you know? So yeah, like you said, you, you can't win a championship, but you start losing these games, you're in the bottom and then it's, you it's can't get out. out. It's, it's impossible to get, to get out of that out. cellar. Yeah. yeah. Right. Which leads me to my, the last two game, the last game that Gladbach versus Bittefield, Gladbach haven't won a game at all. They're sitting 15th. Biddlefield's sitting 12th. Again, that's one of those things where they need to win. They need to start doing something here because it's not looking good. It's not looking like they were last year. So those are the games that I'd watch. Um, No Friday game because of international break. But seeing that, you know, it's a short week anyways with all this international football, getting right back into it Saturday and Sunday anyways. I love that they just jump right back into it. The only thing that concerns me out of the list you had there was uh, Gio Reyna coming back for Dortmund. Uh, he missed uh, the last game for the U.S. men's national team with a hamstring injury. So we'll see if he'll play on uh, Wednesday for them. And if not, it would, I, would, I, doubt, I doubt he'll be playing for I, uh, Dortmund. I would, with Julian Brannett on, on the bench, I would bet that they put him in, who mm-hmm. is a good player, which, by the way, that speaks volumes for the fact that Reyna starts over Brannett. So he'll he'll probably Brandon will probably come in um, and and play and uh, maybe Rana comes in off the bench. I yeah. would expect not maybe not even because of injury, just because of being out on the international break. Sure. Usually they do that. So yep. we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right, my friend. I think uh, we'll wrap it up on another successful Bundesliga chat time from We Are Soccer, Nate. Uh, there is no one out there that I know who knows the Bundesliga better than you. So um, it is uh, very much appreciated to have you I'm on the sure show. You'll find one or two people. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest, I haven't really searched, but uh... <laughs> don't. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you taking the time, my friend. Thanks again, and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be doing this next week, same time. So cheers, Prost.